Would you like to work closer to home, save money on gas, and be rewarded for your hard work and attendance? Then Belicio Foods is looking for you. That's right, Belicio Foods is now hiring for multiple positions and shifts with great employee benefits, an on-site health clinic, competitive wages, and advancement opportunities. Belicio Foods is a company that truly values their employees. Apply online at Beliciofoods.com slash careers. At Vinton County National Bank, we believe in supporting the areas where we live and work. Now, we'd like to honor those who also serve our communities. Our new Community Champions account is especially for first responders, veterans, active military, and anyone employed in the fields of healthcare or education. This account offers rewards, discounts, and other benefits to those who give so much to others. Vinton County National Bank, rewarding those who serve. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the morning show right here on Main Street TV, where it is Monday, and it is going to be, what, sunny and 85 today? Beautiful. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Go figure. Yeah. We went from zero to 100. Yep. Yep. But our friends are here. Um, well, I would like to say our friends from the library are here, uh, both April and John, because typically when you two are here together, it's library mm -hmm. yeah but you have different hats on today yep. yeah we're kind of splitting up on our own ways today <laughs> so that's okay they're still from the library but here to talk about a couple of different projects that you guys have uh going on um so i'll just kind of let you okay um i don't have much to say so i'm just gonna plug this i'm what? with uh jacks wait say that again oh, listen listen april <laughs> i don't have much to say <laughs> <laughs> all right then <laughs> i'm gonna make that a t-shirt um well i'm with the jackson rotary club as you guys know as well and tomorrow we have a fundraiser going on the uh chili and bean dinner so it's going to be down at the uh, farmer sportsman booth which is on veterans drive right near uh eddie jones park yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, 11 to, I'm going to say, tentatively 6 because we it says until sold out. So hopefully, we're kind of hoping to sell out before 6. Um, so don't get upset if you come at like 5 or 5.30 and we're wrapped up because it just means we've already sold out. Okay, um, that would be a great thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, but so yeah, starts at 11. Um, it's cash and carry out only venue. Um, I think Dylan has it. He can put it up whenever he, he wants. But we got um, soup beans or chili and then hot dogs with sauce, cornbread and pop and water. So, um, the rotary, this will help go to the scholarships that we give out at the, um, end of the school year, but also, you know, we do things like the uh, whole paving picnic and a pancake supper for the senior center. You, so, you know, you we all do so yeah, much. Rotary has a lot of, a lot of things that we do, um, in the community as well, but really looking forward to this. Uh, I want to shout out to all the Rotarians that have helped by, you know, making a pot of chili or four pots of chili or beans, <laughs> um, Save a lot for the donations and just other Rotarians who have done monetary donations to the, to bring everything together. Um, we've had a couple of these before, and they've been huge. Um, yeah. They're always a good time. So, yeah. And I think it's going to be a good day tomorrow, too. And well, and that's what I was just so. getting ready to say. Okay. So, just by happenstance, the, the Farmer Sportsman happens to be beside uh, Eddie Jones Park, mm -hmm. which has some beautiful picnic tables, mm -hmm. shelter houses, all kind of fun things. So, what I'm thinking... When it's, you know, 80 degrees or 85 degrees outside or whatever, you could run over to Farmer Sportsman. They're right on Veterans Drive, right on the edge of the park there. Grab your stuff. Go have a beautiful lunch or dinner outside at yeah. the park. Yeah. Be great. That was watch, a great way to Watch the birds and the pollen. <clears throat> it would be yeah. great. I don't know if you should. No. <laughs> well, we can bring you, you some. Thanks. I appreciate yeah. that. And, um... <laughs> Yeah, not only, you know, if I had this cold or whatever, God knows, that you all have had to put up with for the past three weeks, uh, I had to mow grass yesterday on top oh, of it. Yeah, I'm sure that did great. Super. It was awesome. Yeah, we'll save you a bowl and just bring it over to you. I, I appreciate that. The, yeah. yeah. No, but no, seriously, it's 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 fine. Mm -hmm. um, but no, what a great thing. And kind of tell everybody a little bit about, you know, where, where the money does go. Um, well, like I mentioned, we have the scholarships that we give um, to seniors at the end of the school year. And then we just, whatever we bring in, we put back in towards our whole Haven, whole Haven picnic that we do. Because that's is all. Amazing. Yeah, which is coming up in May. Because um, that's all, we provide all that stuff. So that's out of our, yeah. you know, our pocket. Um, 
And then the Pancake Supper, the Sandy Borden Pancake Supper for um, the Senior Center in October. That's all just a, you know, we can buy supplies for that and everything, but everything, the profit goes back into the, the Senior Center there. Yep. Just absolutely um, amazing. Rotary. Love, yeah. Um, you know, do do such good work. And if you would like to join, how would you do that? You just you, you can reach out to a Rotarian or just come um, to a meeting, which is the second and fourth Tuesdays at the Jackson City Library Potter Room from... Um, 12 to 1 um but we, Ish. Or, yeah yeah give or take um yeah and just you have to go to three meetings and then we vote for you to be a member um you ever black we've people. never yeah <laughs> in my years no. i've never known to be like eh, denied so <laughs> <laughs> i don't like your face right, get out so no yeah welcome to come to some meetings and learn more about what we do and yeah we'd be happy to to take you Absolutely, because you know the Rotary is is a uh, service organization. Mm-hmm. Um, I think your motto is even service over self, service above self. Uh huh. Um, and so doing such good for the community and for our local kids and all of that stuff. So if you'd like to be part of that, um, I'm sure that that y'all would be yeah very happy to have yeah some Thrilled. extra hands. And we just the collaborations we do as well. It's you know that's the library too. We do that. Um, but we recently for the Easter Bunny um, pictures. Oh yes, got that with was you, so. so good. Yeah, that was fun. So yeah, we did pictures with the Easter Bunny, and literally it was on what, like a Saturday morning or Sunday, Sunday morning. morning? Sunday morning. And I don't think any of us really knew what to expect. No, I don't think so. We just kind of threw it together in like maybe a week, brewery, week and a half. Yeah. And um, oh my god. <laughs> It, it was, was like cool. A million people. We even had had pets and mm-hmm. every other thing come mm-hmm. in before we opened. So yes. don't anyone yes. call the health department. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Um, if you want to get feisty over that, I don't know what to tell you. But uh, no, it was so much fun. Yeah. It was cute, and um, they had bunny ears and stuff for the mm-hmm. for the kids and yes. for the, the dogs to put on and stuff. Yes, it was, yeah, it was, it was a good was time. Really cute. Yeah. And so our sweet April here happened to be the Easter bunny, and so you there just were blew my cover. Sorry. <laughs> the Easter Bunny came from Easter Bunny land. Where does the Easter Bunny come from? Apparently the Jackson City Library. <laughs> I mean, Santa Claus comes from the North Pole. Where the heck does the Easter Bunny come from? The library and Rotary. I guess. <laughs> I want to see. My thing is, I don't know why all these companies make these costumes for tall people because how many times am i in this situation where i'm in yeah. one of these costumes because i'm six two and so funny <laughs> because april just gets stuck wearing the costume all the time because they're made for like tall yeah people yeah. i don't yeah. know what it's it is. fine though i'm but the funniest part was so there there were a couple of kids that were a little bit shall we say um hesitant mm-hmm. to uh get Let's their picture put it in lightly <laughs> <laughs> um get their picture taken with the easter bunny and so we'd be like it's just april and so april would try to take her she would like take the the hat off the the head and then they would scream they just went to because the easter bunny's head fell yeah off. let's know it wasn't my looks <laughs> it was the fact that the easter bunny's head was oh my off. God, it <laughs> off. And so then it was just like okay we can't win so, yeah so funny yeah. But, but it was it was a good time no it was um, really good yeah. and um it was like a donation basis, and I think a lot of people were very very generous, generous about it. Yeah, and uh, so thank you to everybody that came out, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And so thank you to you guys because you let us use the oh, room. But also, I think I walked by one time and they were putting the it up on the specials board that the Easter Bunny was going to be here. So yeah, that was really cool. Like, it was really fun. I, those are events that we love to do. Mm-hmm. I know and then your the, the golf is. simulating room was my. Uh, <laughs> Was my it was dressing her area? <laughs> Get a little breather, and I had it was her green room. There. Yeah, L- like literally green room. Yeah, uh, it. it was. <laughs> well done, well done. <laughs> She's quite proud I'm of that so one. So honey today. <laughs> it's all that cool medicine. It is. Um, they were like, "Why are you so chipper?" I'm like, "Well, I've taken um, two allergy pills and some cold medicine." I'm like, "It's today, Monday so morning. You're a little too." <laughs> That's why um, my eyes look like they're going to pop out of my head. It's fine. Uh, my blood pressure is now 180 over something, but it's, it's no problem. It's um, fine. Everything's fine. It's fine. It's all <laughs> fine. Um, so, yeah. So, Rotary Chili and Bean Dinner tomorrow. 11 to 6 or until we sell out at the yeah. Farmer's Sportsman booth. So, so we would there, love to see you there. Yeah. Get there later or earlier than later. Right. Because yep. uh, once you sell out, it's, that's, it's gone. That's it. Yep. So, okay, very, very good. All right, so Mr. John, 
That that reminds me, I have to make hot dog sauce today, don't I? Yeah, we see we pull in all our resources. Roger's got him making the hot dog sauce, and he's not even a Rotarian. But to be fair, though, a year, at least a year, year and a half maybe before I became an official Rotarian, I was doing stuff like that. Did you maybe. Did you get my groceries? You got yes, and pulled. Yes, I got half of them in the car right now, but the the ground turkey's in the fridge at home okay. still. So don't worry, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the told. Voluntold, the, uh, yep. Yeah, the, a lot. <laughs> the library this week is doing um, recycling events. Oh, great. Because we kind of wanted to coincide this with Earth Day, which is the 22nd. Um, so okay. what we're doing this week, we're doing uh, electronic recycling. So that is for anybody that has any kind of electronics. We're not taking TVs. Yeah, nothing with the screen. So bring in those electronics, like old printers, DVD players, VCRs, anything like that. So we will take those. Oh, wait, VCRs. This is cracking me up because I literally think I still have a VCR mm -hmm. in my basement. Well, you can bring it and then you won't have it anymore unless you want to hold on to it. And you know, and I, I don't know why I know this, but it has the, the VHS tape of cocktail in it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I know that, but I do. <laughs> is there a certain part that you always like to watch it over him flip I know, him flipping the bottles behind the bar right yeah. oh yeah yep. no uh, i'd rather see tom cruise get hit in the head with the cash register that was that would be my speed i'm not a fan but anyway but yeah you can drop off those the electronics all week long um so we'll be taking those you know free of charge um okay so nothing with a screen you yep. said right, no mm -hmm. like a, no monitors right. or tv yeah yep. okay and the old tv too with the tube we're not taking those either okay so those are just too big now. Okay, so no laptops, no yeah. anything like that. Okay. Yeah, but any they're too big. Yeah, tell me about oh, it. Oh, they're massive. <laughs> oh my gosh, these old TVs. That's what. Well, somebody had that question. Is like, well, you take old TVs, and I did the call. I called the company that's doing it, and they said no because they take up too much room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, because they're you know the screen was this big, but they're this deep. Yeah, yeah. they and they they're weigh three hundred thousand pounds mm -hmm. the, um yeah these are all things that dylan has no idea what we're I, he sent back there like what? now tvs you can fling Youngins. them like frisbees yeah, <laughs> yeah. the 60 inch tv and you can pick it up with two fingers but yeah you remember the big consoles that they sat on the floor oh my gosh yeah dylan, my grandparents you know what we're talking about i think i saw one at my cousin's house once and i was like man that's a movie theater tv and then she told me, like, no, that's just how they used to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she had to, like, throw it away one. and, like, drag it out of the house. It was a struggle for her. Yeah. So what What I think that everybody did this. Y'all did it. You know you did. Uh, everyone went and got a new TV, but you couldn't get the old TV out. So you, you used the new TV. Yeah. <laughs> you used the old TV as the TV stand for the new TV. <laughs> And if you were real fancy, you put it like a blanket over it or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> <A tablecloth. laughs> you know, you did it. We all did. Yep. Okay. So yeah, Anywho. all week long, you bring in your electronics, just bring them right to the front desk and we will uh, take care of them. That's awesome. Um, and we're also doing uh, this Saturday, a paper shredding event. So we got a company coming in and if you have like uh, confidential documents or anything like that, that you want shredded, they do it there on site. Um, so that's a, a really nice service we're offering as well. That one, both of them are free, but we do take donations for the paper recycling, recycling. Uh, okay. and also this Thursday, we are doing a home downsizing workshop. Look how that plays in. Yes. I, I have a plan. Yay, it's, it's all all coming together. Yes. <laughs> yes. Did you so, take cold medicine? Also? No, no, no. <laughs> I've had this. I've had this plan for a couple of months of doing these all together, coinciding. This is when he's in his so, right mind. Uh, <laughs> yeah, home downsizing uh, workshop. That's for people that you know, empty nesters or anybody that's about to retire. If they have a house that's you know got some empty rooms, they want to downsize to maybe uh, clean it out and pr possibly put it for sale. Um, I got a guy. The guy is a. He's doing a presentation. Um, he's from. Philadelphia and he does like a weekly radio show there about home downsizing and he's an appraiser and so he does things like that so okay. he's going to be talking about that so helping people um, you know so tell people about the market for things that they want to sell and how to sell them and how okay, to get rid of them and make money so super cool because let's just all be honest we all have junk that mm -hmm. we all have that one room at least one room yeah. we, I have the two rooms um <laughs> 
in a basement. <laughs> I wasn't calling you out. I, I know, right? <laughs> Let's all go stay at Jen's house. You can't because all the bedrooms are full of crap. But no. Um, but no, there's always that that room or whatever mm-hmm. that you just throw everything in. And why That's not, all. you know, turn your trash into treasure, right? Yeah. Yep. So that is this Thursday at six. How did you find somebody like that to come into Jackson, Ohio? Um, he uh, he just was advertises his product, his presentations to libraries. Is and, he coming in person? Or no, is it he's a... going to be on, okay. on the screen. Oh, oh okay, okay. So okay. we'll be having him there for a. Uh, we have a small smart board, so we'll be on that. So, and this is really cool though because you know I don't know why we all accumulate junk and don't want to get rid of it. And when I say junk, it's not it's it's stuff we don't need. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we don't want to get rid of it. Or we think maybe we'll use it later. We can get that fixed or something. When in reality, we're not going to get it we're, fixed. We're not going to see. It. I mean, it's, it's going like, to sit in that room. Yeah, those two years rooms. From now, it's yeah. still going to be sitting there. Um. So yeah, no, this is a great opportunity to kind of figure out what you can do with some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love that idea. Yeah. After so, that program, then some of the tips he has is like, uh, if you're wanting to sell depersonalize your house because if somebody's coming into your house they want to be able to envision themselves in that house yeah like they, especially if you're going to sell your house yeah. you want to depersonalize yeah it. yeah so that's some of the things we'll be talking about okay very cool so that's electronic recycling all week long bring your stuff in we'll take it we got the home downsizing on thursday at six and then the paper recycling is saturday 10 to 2 okay and um and we have some uh folks from the high school yeah we are kind we're, of talk about that here so you're teaming up with we're, them we're right? partnering with them yeah because they have it's like an environmental club they can tell you more about it when they get in here so it's kind of a project that they've taken on love that, that uh, and so we, they've partnered with us and they've been collecting some stuff too yeah. so you know the shredded days are very very important because um you know, especially like tax documents or you know the first thing that come to my mind where you know there's all kind of uh information on there personal stuff yeah. that that um you don't want to just throw in the trash or like credit card statements th- mm-hmm. um uh, you know stuff from your financial advisor if mm-hmm. you have one you know that that kind of stuff that has personal information on it you want to shred that mm-hmm. um and see the rules are no staples i know that what else no paper clips yeah no paper clips mm-hmm. no, no nothing metal is yeah. gonna like jam in mm-hmm. the yeah thing there so i think that with the shredding that's that's it yeah, yeah. okay Just and then them. is that for donation you said yeah okay so yeah they put out a, a d- donation collection there so if, if people want to give donation they can okay very good and where does that go it goes to pay for them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they're just like, okay, we're coming to do this as a service, but yeah, the, the, the library is paying for it. I mean, we try to at least recoup. Yeah, okay. Some of it back. Yeah. Donations. Okay, cool. Yeah. And I think the electronics is they, they come and just take them because they, I think they break them down and get like the precious metals yeah. and stuff out of them. Oh, okay. That makes sense. And then people have asked about like, um, computers and, uh, like do they need to wipe their hard drive. Everything's getting destroyed. So um, if they're worried about that. Yeah, having, don't worry about yeah, your it'll be fine. Yeah. stuff there because they're going to break it all down anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's all getting destroyed. Okay, in one way or another. Mm-hmm. Or we could totally office space the stuff. <laughs> if you have a fax have machine. A day, sure. Or a copier. Yeah. Was that a fax machine or a copier? There's a fax machine. Was a fax machine. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, if you haven't seen Office Space yeah. the movie, you don't know what we're talking yeah. about. But but I know at home yeah. we have in my, in my basements like printers because they last like a year. No, yeah. yeah. For some reason. And then you throw them away because yeah. it's you know cheaper so to go out and get a, yeah. Or you just buy a new one because the printer's cheaper than the toner cartridge. Yeah. <laughs> True. Which is a whole other story. True. Or you get get the Black Friday printers and those last a couple of months and. Yeah, exactly. So I know we've all got some Black Friday printers in our, our house oh, that yeah. we need to get rid of. Or, yeah, I I bought a Black Friday uh, photo printer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How many times did you use that? Uh, about two. <laughs> <laughs> Knock that camera right on top and it'll print all those pictures. But who prints pictures anyway? True. I mean, and then the camera broke, so mm. then it's kind of useless. Right? Yep. So anyway. But okay, so electronics, but th- that would all be... Stuff that you could bring in and yep. just mm-hmm. drop off at just, the library. Yep. Yeah, we'll have a have a box there right in front just to drop them in. 
Okay. Well, while you guys are here, what else is going on at the library? Anything new and exciting? Mm, we're starting to make our plans for the summer. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a bunch of our summer reading programs. We're going to have um, magicians. We're going to have, um, um, you know, we're doing our first responders day like we always do. Um, for the adults, we're doing a series of hikes. We're doing Lake Alma. We're doing like the one the, the truck. Did one of those just happen? Um, no. No? Okay. So you haven't got started haven't done those with yet. this yet? No. Okay. Okay. No. Then we're doing Lake Catherine. We're going to do uh, Leo Petroglyph, and we're going to do awesome. and we're going to do a history tour, tour around town with Bob Bob Irvin. Okay. So if you've never um, talked history <laughs> with Bob Irvin, worth the price of admission, mm. which is zero. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's way worth that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he is. Um, he's just one of those folks that you need to to spend some time with Absolutely. in your life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Have he, at least one good conversation with him. Yeah. For sure. He was in the other day and I was going to try to pick his brain about the, but he was actually in for a meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was, like, was going to try to pick a, his brain about our building because I have so many people ask me about the history of it and mm -hmm. I know some of it, but I don't know all of it. So, but I know he will know because yeah, he, he knows will. everything yeah. That, yeah. about our area. So, yeah. So that walking tour would be really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let me say on, on that, the uh, hikes and stuff this year, something new is, we're going to be able to transport some of the teens to these as well. Yep. Um, so I think you, Roger and Ian, were talking about how to get some, some kids out there that normally wouldn't have the transportation to go to these hikes. Oh, that's so awesome. I was able to reach out to uh, Lisa Warren's with the um, transportation at uh, community action. Yeah. And she's arranged it to where we'll have a, um, one of their drivers um, give transportation. So I think, did we say 10? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. For 10 well, people? Nine, nine plus Ian, our team. Ian's, Ian's riding with them, so oh, okay. nine um, teens. Yeah, so they can go out and enjoy the hikes as well if they don't have transportation. So love that. Yeah. That's so great. And uh, where do you go to find out information about that? So our um, Facebook page and, and then our, our website, website jacksonstatelibrary.org. Mm -hmm. Okay. So everything's on yeah. those. And two. every month uh, we print out like a paper yeah. schedule, so you should at least come to the library once a month at the beginning of the month yeah. to get one of those Grab schedules. One of those. You know, when we went and did our uh, live show from the library, it's just, you know, it's just such a cool vibe in there. And it's just such a, like, nice, safe space. And, mm -hmm. you know, everybody, it, welcoming, yeah. I guess, would be the, the word. And comfortable. And, you know, if you're just kind of, I don't know, feeling down or you just need need a space to go and chill out for a little bit, the library is a perfect opportunity to go do that. And uh, you can relax. You can read. You can do any number of things there. Mm -hmm. You said welcoming. We uh, we love that because we always say that the oh, library is for everybody. For sure. So everybody. Absolutely. And and everybody should feel safe and welcome there. And mm -hmm. and uh, that was kind of the vibe I got the minute I walked in the door. And um, typically I don't make it past the Potter room. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, so we were able to go and kind of see every aspect of the library and a uh, very, very fascinating place. Mm -hmm. You guys are blessed to get to go there every day. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. We like yep. it. Yep. <laughs> very, very good. All right. Well, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Don't forget the Jackson Rotary Chili and Bean Dinner mm -hmm. tomorrow. Yep. I think that's it. That's it. Right? That's what yeah. I got. Yeah. Sportsman. Okay. Yeah. Well, very good. Well, thank we'll you all. We'll slip out and let the others come on in. Yeah. Okay. I know they're just so excited. They're the bits. <laughs> yes. They're so excited to come in here and talk to me. I can tell. Well, thanks for having us on. Yeah. Oh, you. of course. Come yeah. back anytime. You know, y'all right. are always welcome here. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Absolutely. All right, Dylan, you want to do the weather while we're transitioning uh, out? It, this is some crazy, crazy, crazy weather, I tell you. Um, thanks, guys. Um, yeah, so today looking very, very warm. And I, the weather forecast that I saw this morning was actually calling for highs of 85 today. So I'm not exactly sure if uh we're gonna make it up that way but uh some sunshine in the sky and doesn't get much better than that absolutely gorgeous day wonderful day to get out do some yard work uh maybe your grass has dried out a little bit since then <laughs> since last week um so and you know lows still dipping down to around uh 55 overnight tonight tomorrow on tuesday we do have some rain in the forecast um a little bit 40 percent chance with highs around 80 degrees lows of 63 come on over and um yeah, yeah highs of 80 so very very cool 
Um, and then Wednesday, lots of rain in the forecast and uh, a little bit cooler temperatures, but still very, very nice with highs of 78, lows around 56 degrees. So we got Mel too. All right. Very good. All right. Well, ladies, welcome to the program. Um, and you'll go, you guys will share, so you have to talk up kind of loud. Yeah, so, that's um, huh? That's fine. Okay. See, oh, they're so agreeable. I love that. So first off, could you introduce yourselves and we'll talk a little bit about your club or your organization? Um, I'm Kylie Fowler. I'm Deanna Houston. I'm Maya Dummett. Melanie Goebel. And Melanie, believe it or not, is not in high school, even though she looks like she is. <laughs> but you're kind of a um, a new advisor, right? Yeah. For these for these folks. Yep. Um, so I'll be um, taking over the YCAC club next year, um, helping the students achieve their goals. Yes, very good. And this kind of goes in conjunction with what John was just talking about of the um, Shred It Day there at the library. So can you girls kind of explain um, a little bit about your organization and, and what you all do up at the high school? Yeah. Okay, I'll go first. Um, how should I word it? What is what is the club called? Is it club? Yeah, it's okay. YCAT. So it's um, Youth Climate Action Team. And it's like a bunch of high schoolers doing environmental, like, activities. activities. Yeah. That's so good. And how long has this been going on? Since About three years, yeah, three, that. yeah, twenty twenty two, yeah, okay. Yeah. And how did it come to be? Do you guys know? Um, well, yeah, <laughs> we're actually, like, yeah, me um, and two other people who are now graduated, um, <clears throat> just came up with the idea. Okay. Of like an environmental club, and then Anna kind of was like, "Hey, let's make it a Y cat." So that's kind of how it came to be. Love that. Yeah. And um, so let's talk about. Um, a few of the things that you all have done and achieved um, over the last three years. Um, I can. <laughs> um, uh, around this time last year, I planted an apple orchard by the middle school track. And uh, since then, I've partnered up with a other YCAT club from another school. And we're doing a like clothing drive with them because one of their members like owns her own like thrift bus business. A what? <laughs> what is a thrift bus? It's like you well, know, like so she like bought this bus and she like what's is the this word? A high school kid? Yeah, she's yeah. from Huntington. Yeah, like oh, renovated it. That's yeah. so that, awesome. Like, you're renovating it. Yeah, she yeah, renovated yeah. it, and then it's like a own little store, but she like thrifts cl like clothes to like sell to. Mm -hmm. So we had high school kids bring in clothes, and yeah. then she's going to go through it, and then she'll put it in her bus to do the next year. So that's, I guess it's like her side hobby. That's awesome. Very yeah. good. So you uh, – so I didn't know – where did you plant the orchard, you said, by the track? Yeah, it's like – like not where the entrance of the track is, but like where like the throwing is. Like if you look like past – Like on the Dickinson the, so street side. Yeah, if mm -hmm. you look past okay. the fence, it's like right there. So do you have any apples yet? No, we just no. planted them last spring. Yeah, so. I know if I remember. Melanie here um, uh, is um, quite into farming and, and growing and things like that. So I don't know how long, do, because I know we have an apple tree at our house and it took several years for it to start growing apples. But once it did, man, woof. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how big the trees are that you guys planted, but maybe five five years or something. it takes yeah. a I minute have, but then yeah. once they it's like all of a sudden magically here they come yeah yeah, yeah. i think we did like semi dwarf ones or something yeah. like so they wouldn't get too big how many mm -hmm. is there because we each did about two trees we planted about two trees each i think there's like maybe okay. minimum seven, seven at least yeah. at least seven that's good but i'm not sure and they're further spaced apart enough so it'd be good yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have room to grow. Yes. No, that's so cool. As long as someone doesn't throw a discus through it, we'll be in good shape for a shot yeah. put, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just really nice because Jackson was known for our apple orchards, and now we only have the mayor's orchard and then Kylie's orchard. So we're yeah. kind of starting back up again. Good yeah. job. Yeah. I love that. And, you know, doing it in town, it is kind of um, – a little sad to, to know that that was kind of what we were known for here in our area. And then now, uh, one yeah. by one, each of the orchards have kind of closed down. And 
um, you know, gone away. So thank you for uh, bringing that back, our heritage back to us. <laughs> yeah. Very good. All right. So what else have you all gotten into? Um, so I'm starting recycling back at our high school for the paper shredding. I'm hoping that we can continue to do that. So I went through all the storage rooms to find bits and pieces of all the bags from when we used to recycle at the high school. And so I went and put those on all the um, school rooms. And then we will pick them all up again for the paper shredding. And then also we used to do composting at the school too. So we're hoping to start that back up again. Okay. And I think Dylan, didn't you, weren't you kind of part of that? but um okay well let's talk about composting for a minute and and how to do it and i know we could do an entire program on composting mm -hmm. um and the proper ways to do it but in a nutshell can you kind of explain why it's important and and how to get started um so i think the base for this compost um, is going to be food waste from the cafeteria mm -hmm. in the classrooms, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so just the right combination of um, green materials, so like the food waste, and uh, brown materials, so like, I don't know what you'll use, grass clippings or hay or straw, mm -hmm. um, and uh, rotating the pile every week or two, yeah. um, or whenever you get to it, and then mm -hmm. um, you end up with some really great uh, organic matter for your garden. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I, it just all sounds so simple. Like mm -hmm. why, you know, so, you know, you think about even just your household. Mm -hmm. then, then you get into like a school setting where there's so much, um, you know, food and all that stuff thrown away and whatnot. But think about your household. You know, you have your coffee grounds every day. Mm -hmm. You have, those can be put into compost. Um, your eggshells, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, all of the things that you, you know, if you, you're peeling potatoes or you're doing whatever, like all of that can go into your compost. I know we have a little composter at our house. We set it on our deck and I bought it on Amazon, I think, or whatever. And it's just like a barrel and you, it's mm -hmm. like you just spin it mm -hmm. and you water it and you spin it. Yeah. yeah. We actually had people from what Athens come to the high school a couple of weeks ago and mm -hmm. they had yeah. three different things to help sort. So they actually, mm -hmm. when the students came up to say, well, what is this? Is it recycling? Is it compost? Is it trash? And they would help them like, understand what goes where and actually if you oh. look at packaging it can say if it's recyclable or not or if the containments in it is re like compostable yeah so we've also had waste audits as well yes mm -hmm. yeah and i think they said less than 50 percent of it is trash yeah yeah something like that mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. so a lot of the things that are going into our landfills or whatever could be recycled or Compost. uh, composted mm -hmm. which is cool and i think a lot of things that we learned when we went to a we do a Green Teachers Conference in the fall, and we actually learned a lot of things that we put in the trash can actually be recyclable. So although we can compost things, we should, before we recycle anything, we should reuse something. So if it can be reusable or if you can take something and make it into something new, it's better before you recycle something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I, I was just sitting here thinking of a perfect example, like when Josh and Maddie were here from 4-H and the Extension office and whatever, we were talking about starting plants and like planting seeds. And Mel, you could probably talk to this. Um, but they were talking about, A, if, you know, you buy plants from somewhere, save all the containers because you can reuse those. But they were talking about, like, egg cartons. Mm -hmm. And you can use, you know, you have, like, what, 12 eggs, you know. There's 12 little holes there that you could, you know, um, start seeds in. Mm -hmm. And, again, that's using it before mm -hmm. you would throw it away or recycle yeah. it or whatever. So that's a perfect um, example of that. So, all things that, like, duh, why didn't yeah. I think of that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just always think of, like, when I was in school, reduce, reuse, recycle was, like, drilled into our minds. And um, just thinking about that, reducing first, trying to use less plastic and stuff when you can. And, sure. Um, reusing, like you mentioned, and then last resort, recycle. So mm -hmm. I always think of it as, like, we think of recycle first sometimes, like, oh, I've used this item I got to put in recycling. That's doing my environmental duty. Sure. But Which is fine too. Other, I mean, yes, you know, totally. like, yeah. please do that if yeah, you're not going to reuse. But. but it's good to think about reusing as, as an, you know, an option too um, mm -hmm. before you get to that third step. But, Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. What are, um, I don't know, do you girls have any uh, like examples or, or anything? Like I was talking about the egg carton thing. Like, I don't know. Is there, is there anything else that you guys can think of that you would reuse something for before you would recycle? Well, when we went to the Green Teachers Conference, we had 
um, a display of old CDs and old um, like discs and stuff, and they actually had little kids paint on them and then put them on fences and stuff to like kind of shimmer and just be decorative. So it's kind of like oh. you can make certain things into art projects too. Just to make cool. the world a prettier place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <right? laughs> love that. That's such a good idea. Yeah. I would have never seen. I wonder if it would keep birds away from yeah. your garden. I, it might yeah, yeah. that too. Yeah. Or the deer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, one thing I, I reuse a lot is cardboard um, from online purchases. or I, We just get a lot of cardboard at the house. And um, it's really great to put on top of your flower beds or your garden beds before you mulch. Um, it helps keep the weeds down for at least a full summer. Um, and it's really good food for the worms and little critters. So that's a great... Oh. Um, way to reuse cardboard yeah. so instead of like that black mat stuff that you buy or whatever you would put that down first and then and yeah, then that makes sense and listen we all have a plethora of amazon boxes let's just be honest about it um and you know there's just not that's just the world in which we live mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's and so if we can come up with something to do with that cardboard that's that's great i think what we also do at the high school is what we used to do for i'm a, i'm in 4-h and i I think it's easy to, you know, we use hay a lot, and so we used recycling paper and we shredded it, and we gave it to people that have rabbits and stuff that can use it for bedding. Mm, so you can also reuse it for other things like that too. Yeah, very good idea. Just well, no staples <laughs> for the little bunnies. Mm -hmm. We also um, we did a fundraiser and we reused yogurt, like the little glass yogurts. Mm -hmm. We made it into candles to sell. Um, oh, I think that's a pretty good example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. And those can continue on for, yeah, you know, just keep yeah. refilling them. Yeah. We were planning also to go do the sidewalk market this, is it May 2nd is mm -hmm. the next one that's yep. coming up? Yeah. The next and we were thinking about for a fundraiser for YCAT, we'd have a booth and we'd sell candles. Um, I think you were talking about doing some of your stuff too. And you guys, um, maybe the paper. The, yeah, the seed, yeah. seed paper, seed yeah. Papers. So we take, um, I guess you could kind of talk about it more. The seed paper. It's, What's that? It's basically blended up like paper shreddings and you like let it dry out into like little shapes mm -hmm. and you can put seeds into it and then plant it somewhere and it'll plant into a uh, mm -hmm. flower. So I think last year yeah. we used like native flower plants and like, um, what's that seed or what's that plant butterflies? Oh, it's got, um. Asclepius, I guess. Yeah, Some, something, something like, like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. It was milkweed, I think. Milkweed. Milk, yeah, yeah it's milkweed. Yeah. Milkweed. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, it's pretty cool. And then you just plant the paper, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. And your seeds yeah. sprout. Yeah. That's great. So you can use it as a card, like give yeah. somebody it. Yeah. You can have it in the shape of a card, and yeah, then they can plant the cool. card. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's really that's fun. That's a great idea. Yeah. And, I mean, what a fun project just for, like, little kids, too. That yeah. They can watch their little gardens grow and... It's simple for them to just like put it in the ground and yeah. Speaking of kids, um, you guys are doing the breeding. Yeah, so for Read Across America Week, we went to all the elementaries and we each picked a book out and we read it to the um, the classrooms. I picked a book about bees and a community garden, so I talked about like the cycle of bees and how they help you, and then I talked about like um, a community coming together for community gardens. I don't know what books you guys read. Mine was also about the environment, like different yeah. rocks and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then we plan to go back, I think, beginning of May, because everybody's schedules are just so tight with testing right now. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to try going beginning of May to celebrate Earth Month and do crafts with the kids, too. Yeah. So good. Yeah. So about how many members um, do you have in your group? About like 70, yeah. I think. What? Yeah, probably less than that, yeah. actually. I'd say there's... It was 70 last I, year. I, I yeah. thought you were going to say like seven. <laughs> I would say there's That's about so cool. 70, 60, maybe 60, 60 to 70. 70. Yeah. But maybe 30 to 40 people that actually are really like, really, involved, really yeah. participate. Yeah. Yeah. Which is still a lot, I feel like. That's pretty mm -hmm. good. Uh, yeah. 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 Like I said, I thought you were going to say seven. So <laughs> <laughs> I feel like White Cat's really good for community service, especially where at the high school now you have to have a certain amount of community service yeah. hours to graduate. It's also just like fun. It's a it fun is. like you get your service right? hours, you go have fun, you're going hiking. Yeah. It's like you get all three. Yeah. yeah. Last year we went to OU and we did a tour there and we learned about pH um, in the water and mm -hmm. then how to test for pollution. So if you can actually look at certain organisms and the pH levels to see what the pollution levels are 
and we creeks and rivers. Got to splash around in the water yeah. and everything. It was fun. And then we went to a site that did composting or something too, right? Yeah, that was also at OU. Mm-hmm. It was like their facility for. So we do a lot of little trips like that, and then uh, was us three, Emma, and a couple other people. We went to Columbus, mm-hmm. and we went to, to the teachers conference. Yeah, it was an English. It was a national English something, and we were trying to get English teachers and science teachers coming together for certain projects. So, like, the English part about writing about the project and then the science part of it, like, the actual project and bringing it together in the that school. That is so cool. We spoke, a, we spoke in front of a ton of people yeah. about our project. <laughs> it was pretty cool. And then the other school that is actually the, the, yeah. the yeah. thrift bus was yeah. actually there as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And then we do a lot of, like, cleanup days and recycling locally, too. Yeah. So, if you had to... Let's preach for a moment. If you had to just like tell our viewers like one thing they could start with today that would be good for the environment, what what would be, you know, each one of your suggestions? I would say overconsumption. I feel like that's yeah. very easy nowadays to just like see this trend and like you have to buy it and people are making you want to buy it. And you just have to like step back for a second and just be like, do I really need that? And I don't know. I feel like people are so easily influenced nowadays about that like I feel like something is like we abuse certain things we're like oh I'm reusing it so it's fine so like you know like Stanley's are a big thing right now so somebody's like oh I'll buy five Stanley's just because I want a different color when really water bottles are made to just have (laughs) you're defeating the purpose (laughs) you're you're defeating the purpose of going to oh well I'm bringing my Stanley so I'm not like buying a plastic water bottle yeah when actually you bought like five of them so you're not actually you're defeating the whole yep. purpose yeah. of it. Overconsumption. That's like a big one, I feel like, especially yeah. now. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, just, yeah. All right. Your tip. <laughs> <laughs> for like people not to. Yeah. Like, like one thing that someone can do for the environment today. I mean, not litter, I guess. <laughs> that would be literally yeah. amazing. I mean, you just drive down the road and there's. It's embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty bad. Like, I just don't understand. So you're driving down the road, and you've got, like, your McDonald's bag, and you're like, I'm going to die if it's in my car for two more minutes. Like, I don't understand. Like, not just wait till you get Why would you get it out the window? I I don't don't understand that concept. I I, I see people all the time. I understand maybe throwing the containments of what's in your drink out, but when you take the entire thing, just throw it out. I just don't understand. Yeah, Yeah, like if you're, you know, you have like ice in your cup and you don't want it to like leak in your car, I get like dumping the ice out, but then keep the cup. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how people don't feel guilty about that. Me either. Oh my gosh. I agree. Like I. I It's throwing out food for me. I just like, I can't do it. Yeah, and you can get fined for it, but I feel like around here you just don't get fined for it as much it's just hard to catch yeah i mean unless a highway patrolman or somebody's behind you like i mean how are you going to get caught doing Mm -hmm. that but it still just makes you a bad person (laughs) don't (laughs) say that (laughs) do not litter (laughs) like didn't we learn that in like the first grade yes (laughs) Yes. like seriously guys i think it's just pure laziness honestly and just not in your schedule just to not do it i guess it's just disrespectful it's disrespectful for for so many reasons but, all right, Mel, what's your tip for the day? Um, plant flowers, plant mm-hmm. tree, a pl- plant a tree. Um, you don't have to do anything um, too extravagant, but the more flowering plants, preferably native plants, and you can just do a quick Google search to see what those are. Mm-hmm. They're easy. They're low maintenance. Native plants love to grow in our climate, so you barely have to do anything to maintain them. But anything you can grow to help out the butterflies and the bees, um, yeah. is always great yeah and be kind to our bee friends we need them we die if they die i don't yep. think people understand yep. that yeah they're I, not mean they're I, cute i'd say another big tip is to buy locally too mm-hmm. i feel like we're always into big corporations when we have so many nice little stores around here and then we also have like the markets and stuff that you can buy your fresh produce from instead of just going to kroger or walmart and you know then you know what you have like for example Melanie has a, a farm, mm-hmm. and um, she's bringing asparagus today to the brewery <laughs> so that we can buy local things. And I don't know. Jamie's like, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I have a couple ideas, but that's important to us. Yep. And you came and did some flower arrangements. And it's so funny um, that people just light up 
when they see that. And so we took basically, I guess, kind of speaking of recycling, we took um, beer cans and made and Mel made like some really pretty, beautiful flower arrangements for some of our tables at the brewery. And um, people just literally light up when they see them. They're just like, and they're just, and you said, you know, a lot of it's stuff you forage kind of around your, your place or, yep. you know, <laughs> things that do grow that are native to our mm -hmm. area and whatever. And they're gorgeous, yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And it just makes people happy. Flowers make people happy. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> is it bad to cut them? Or are we, are we even? No, like no. I mean, I think that for every, um, I, I grow enough and to where I think that I'm not depleting the, Sure. The store. You of, just put them back. Yeah, exactly. So it's a circle but, of life kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. But very cool. It's, it's great. It's wonderful. One thing I really love about Jackson is that there are so many um, businesses and local community members that uh, love to collaborate and work together to um, support each other and um, and uh, supporting youth that are trying to do mm -hmm. things and make wonderful um, programs happen in Jackson. So absolutely. It's, it's a great place. Anything, you know, that we can do to encourage them, mm -hmm. uh, we should. Yep. Because you all are, are our future. So thank you for doing what you're doing. I think it's amazing. There's one more thing that um, Maya wanted to talk about that she's, oh, yeah. she worked really hard last year to get <laughs> on yeah. the books for us. Oh, yeah. Go for it, sister. Toot yeah. your horn, man. <laughs> do it. So, we No, it's okay. <laughs> we are actually about to work on a community garden in Jackson. And I'm glad you okay. I'm glad yeah. you said that because that was going to be one of my questions. Yeah. Is the future is there a place that we can do that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I actually went on it was like a board meeting. Um the city council, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> um and I presented like the prompt of like having a community garden for us to like use. And basically we got a plot for the across the bus. Um what's that called? Like the yeah. Oh, yeah. is it? Um, okay, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we're going to work on getting that started. I think it's going to be fun. So tell us how a community garden works, because I yeah. mean, I think there's all kind of different ways you can yeah, go with it. Yeah, there's a ton it. of so different what, ways. what is your vision for our community garden here in our area? I think just like plots of different places, like you can sponsor a plot, or like I was thinking like the like elementaries could have a plot and they could use it. Or just like the high school, or just anyone who would want a plot. So does that mean like anybody in the community could come and get like this square and plant their own stuff, or are you guys going to plant everything and then give it to people, or how how's that going to work? Um, that's probably like long term thinking of like what we want to do, but I was thinking just like the renting, but I don't know how that's going to work yet. I want that to be the future though. Yeah, like, be awesome. Yeah. I mean, the one great thing that we have here in our area that we're blessed with is some land. Yeah. Um, and you know, the big cities, people are piled on top of each other, and they don't necessarily have a lot of green space. So we do have that here. Mm -hmm. So you girls can uh, can definitely, I can see that in your future <laughs> for sure. Are you all seniors? Yeah. Oh, yes. so where are you headed? <laughs> you want to go seniors? <laughs> um. The Ohio State University. Okay, very good. And what are you thinking you're going to major in? Um, Earth sciences. Okay. Um, I'm actually going down south to Coastal Carolina University, and I'm majoring in marine and coastal environmental science. Very cool. I am not going to college, but I am going to tattoo eventually. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so are you all, all artistic and stuff? Oh, she's I very artistic. I would say so, Yeah. <laughs> Don't be so <laughs> humble. <laughs> Maya's pretty good. Thank you. That's Thank awesome. You. How do you get to, how does that happen? How do you get to be, you know, a tattoo person? Um, I guess just like ask is there around. Like, or... Is there like licenses involved? or You health? have to get like a health license of some sort, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. So you have to go and I would think apprentice. And... Yeah. Yeah. Apprentice for sure. So do you, are you sick and twisted? Are you like, <laughs> take that pain? <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't. I, no, I don't think I'm so. Going to stab you with a needle for the next hour I don't and think a half. That's why I'm going into that? <laughs> She's that way. I can just tell it. <laughs> no, but how cool would that be to see like your art like permanently? Uh, yeah, on, that is I mean, definitely so a big. Neat. That's definitely a big reason why I want to do that. 
it's like a forever thing unless they get it removed. <laughs> that would be I sad. wouldn't have to see that part. <laughs> so right, just don't spell anything wrong. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, don't that that scares me. Harry <laughs> <Very> Gert. Yeah. <laughs> can see it now no uh I always thought that would be so cool because as a tattoo artist you know you're seeing somebody having faith in you that mm. you know their vision you, you can put that on them and they're going to have that for a lifetime yeah that's like pressure yeah but it's good though it keeps me in line yeah. Yeah. Line. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> so Mel, tell us a little bit about some of the things that you, you do out at the farm. Are you guys open to the public or how, you know, how does that work? Cause you're into everything. Um, no, not open to the public at this time. Um, uh, so we have a certified organic, um, farm in Jackson and, um, we do mixed veggies and sell to local restaurants and, um, also sell it at the farmer's market. Um, and uh, we and um, so and we do flowers as well as veggies um, and yeah really just all kind of fun yeah. stuff yep so you said certified organic how tell, can you talk about that for a moment sure yeah um, so certifying so we made the decision to get certified because. Um, one, my farming mentors were all certified in their respective states programs. Um, so I was used to uh, learning how to grow um, according to those kind of national standards. Um, but basically, it, it, it holds me, I don't use any synthetic um, pesticides, um, herbicides, or fertilizers. And uh, my main source of nutrients is building, is compost and using building the soil so my emphasis is on building soil like healthy soil um, so okay. I don't till um, and I try to keep the soil covered and living plants as much as possible but basically organic is so you're not using roundup right no, no <laughs> right, yeah um, so it's it's a it's when you get certified you make a whole system plan um, so here's what I do when I have these pests here's how I manage my soil health here's how you uh, manage your water usage and all the details that come with um, grow, growing, having a farm, um, and and their practices for how you manage all these issues that come up, um, what you're growing, where you're sourcing your seeds, where you're sourcing your soil, your, your soil mix, um, everything, and it just kind of for me, it just keeps me on track um, with managing managing a, a really diverse uh, farm, um, and so. It, and it keeps me honest. It keeps me from wanting to take shortcuts on, um, you know, buying the certified organic uh, uh, compost versus the regular um, fertilizer or something like that. So it's it helps me keep track. I stay on track, and um, and it gives it gives a little bit of um, of transparency to people who um, might not necessarily know what they're buying or if you, if you don't have the opportunity to know the person that you're getting your produce from, right. um, at least you can see that they're using organic practices um, and have a better, a little bit better understanding of um, their environmental impact um, on their farm. So. Yeah, because I mean, let's just be honest, it's, it's easy to go to the big box store and buy, you know, whatever fertilizer or buy the Roundup or yeah. buy, you know, we all do it and we shouldn't probably, but it's the easiest way to, to combat yeah. Some of the things when that's not your, um, I'm not trying to be like, you're, yeah. it's not your life. Yeah. You know, yep. we don't want to deal with dandelions. Okay. Yeah. So we go and we buy some weed killer and yeah. we, you know, spray the dandelions in our mulch and whatever. And, um, but the lifestyle that you're living, I think that's so cool because, you know, it is something that you have to live day in and day out all the time and have a plan for. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I just. I try to just just be a little bit more mindful, kind of understanding um, why, what we're getting. I mean, just what we're buying, where that's coming from in general. I'm not perfect, and I by no means just because we're – Well, we or, think you are. Well, and, <laughs> and, and, you know, I always say, like, if you can't – not everybody has to be certified to grow wonderful, healthy, sustainable food and be kind to the environment. Um, we just okay. I just chose to be – to do that because it's – it's easier for me, um, and it works for me. But um, 
the most important thing you can do, whether you're using any kind of pesticide or herbicide, is growing your own food. It, by growing some of your own food, even just a little bit, you're offsetting like a whole um, chain of uh, events that happens when you buy food at the grocery store. Um, and that has a huge environmental impact, just transportation, growing, everything. Um, so anytime that you can get a chance to grow your own food, that's awesome. Anytime you can get a chance to buy food somebody from somebody else's garden or farm, you're, you're doing your part. So um, yeah, and we're fortunate to have a lot of local farmers and growers in our area. We and are. there is access. Um, and places like the Farmer's Market, um, which starts the, first, the last Saturday of June, um, and that's every Saturday in downtown Jackson. Yes. Um, and then we have the farm, the sidewalk market that they mentioned. Um, yeah. And that's the first Thursday of every month. Um, so those are great places. And um, yeah, we're always working on other places to, to, to get to go out and, get, and find local produce. But that is so awesome. Love that. So I'm just sitting here thinking, you know, like the, the, you know, we all get our seven dust and all the stuff that you're probably not supposed to do. Um, but like, how do you as an organic um, farmer, like combat pests and, you know, weeds and all that stuff? I mean, just uh, in a nutshell, I know yeah. it's, there's a whole, we could do like three shows about this, no, but. Yeah. Um, that I, I don't know. I say the, the, the hard way. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> you I take the little bug and you throw it to I the just, side. Literally. I mean, um, there's different things you could do. Um, we have birds. We have chickens and ducks, and that helps um, with some of the pest management. Oh. But, I mean, that comes with the, um, its own issues, too. <laughs> we have a lot of low fences to keep them out of places where we're growing, things that we don't want them to mess with. So there is um, – but also just removal, crop rotation, um, having great uh, diversity of plants so that one pest – if you lose a crop or one row is gets eaten by bugs, you – you, you can still make a profit on your farm that year, you know, by having, because you have other crops that that bug isn't necessarily okay. eating. So ha, it, it, it allows you to have um, um, a little bit more flexibility as far as what what crops um, you, you can sell when you, if, if something bad happens um, yeah, by having diversity. And then um, predate, there's a lot of beneficial bugs. You can do releases but mostly the best thing to do is just provide habitat for beneficial bugs like ladybugs and lacewings and and other things speaking so. of you know the the lady beetles kind of took over a while back and i don't know that they're as prevalent as they were there for a while but so yesterday i was working out in our in our yard and we were mowing and i was pulling weeds and stuff like that and this ladybug and it was just like such a moment this ladybug um and when i was in college our sorority thing was ladybugs so it just like it was meaningful to me but it landed on my glove as i was like and i like carried i was just like you just hang out with me today and Aww. she just like sat there forever and like i was like i just loved it because they do great. such good things but she just like hung out with me yeah. for a while and i was like yay yeah <laughs> it sounds stupid but it was just like a, i don't know it was yeah. just like Kind of cool. You get those little connections when you're outside and having a connection with nature. And that's why it's so important to involve youth, yes. these guys and younger, you know, younger kids and just um, kind of passing down that natural curiosity and appreciation for even the little, littlest, minute. Right. Um, like creatures. a little bug hanging yeah. out with you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, is there any, has anyone ever known someone that goes to a nursery or to a farm and is like, I... This makes me miserable. I hate flowers. They're ugly. Like, yes. everybody loves to be outside. Like, is there yeah. not anybody that just feels better when you're outside and you get some, your your feet in the dirt yeah. and your hands in the dirt and all that? I mean, there's, there's something to that. I think so. So good for you all. Thank you for doing what you're doing. And um, before we get out of here, let's talk about that Shred It Day again. Um, because, you know, again, these are all things that we all have um, – you know, tax forms and all these things laying around our house that you might uh, want to get rid of. So it's a great opportunity. Well, it's the 20th, so the Saturday. It's from, what, 10 to noon? I think it's from 9 to oh. nine to noon this year, yeah. so it's a little bit earlier. Okay, good. At the library, mm -hmm. Jackson City Library. And then we suggest to put all your papers into a big cardboard box so it's easier for us to hold because, I mean, we're taking it out of your car, we're hauling it, and then we're just throwing it in. So it's just easier to take back and forth if you have it in a cardboard box. Okay. Yeah. And make sure your staples are out of it. Um, there's paper no clips. paper yeah. clips. Um, I 
is it electric cycling too this year or no? I'm not yeah, sure. they're is doing it? electronics at the um, library right. as well. So, just nothing uh, with a screen. Yes, okay. is what they. So there's said. certain ones. Yes. Yeah. So like VCRs or mm-hmm. you guys don't even know what that is. <laughs> I think the library is taking donations, and we're also mm-hmm. helping provide funding for that because it is expensive mm-hmm. to bring them out there to help you shred it. But I mean, they're going to be there all morning. We're going to be there all morning, and. So donations are welcome as well. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah, bring your bring your money with your with your with your papers. All right. Well, is there anything else y'all wanted to tell us about before we let you get out of here? Just hope to see everyone there. Yeah. I mean, see you Saturday yeah. morning, yeah. bright and early. Yeah, I mean, it's win win for everyone, yeah. right? It's yeah. good for the environment. It's good for you know you if you need to get rid of stuff. Um, Plus maybe, um, you know, just helping out along the way. So thank you girls for for hanging out with us and keep on keeping on. You all are amazing. And thank you for what you're doing. Um, And uh, doing that at such a young age, I think, is uh, is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. And keep planting art orchards. Yeah. <laughs> you want to come to my house and do that? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> I got plenty of land. Uh, All right. Well, we have to get out of here for the day. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, we will be right back here tomorrow, probably with some news. Right, Dylan? Yep. Okay. <laughs> we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye.